Still a better sight picture than the Ruger LCP. Hancock 45 here. Make sure you buy an NRA membership. You watch Tucker Carlson. <laughs> uh. All right, we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one really from the holster. If you look at this holster real quick, got a Glock 17. This is a Safari Land. I don't know what ALS, I think, something like that. We're taking the the uh, Glock 17 out. We'll stick this in here. Okay, I have no shot timer, so I want you to do the beep. beep. Aircock 45 here with another 1911 video. Oh, I'm just kidding with you. It's a Glock 42. All right, let's shoot this bad boy. Put our ears in. Let's hit the gong. <laughs> All right, how about these targets over here? <laughs> Glock 42. Pro-choicers hate this gun. Find out why. The Baby Glock. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Agent Espo channel. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite handgun, with no controversy, the Glock. I've got a few Glocks on the table we're going to talk about, and uh, we're going to have a little fun today. Let's talk a little bit about the Glock 7. Punk put a Glock 7 on me. You know what that is? It's a porcelain gun made in Germany. Doesn't show up on your airport x-ray machines. You're going to cost more than you make in a month. No, in all seriousness, the Glock 17 is the original full-size handgun made in Austria. Uh, it cannot bypass airport security, and it's like 400 bucks, so it's pretty cheap. You tripping, bro. You tripping. It's a full size. Many people use this handgun either in uh, some sort of line of work or recreationally. My personal duty gun is a Glock 19. <laughs> These things are so cool. Yeah. They shoot underwater. You can pour sand at them and they'll shoot. Shoot every time. Uh, this is my personal everyday carry gun. I plan on getting this optics cut in the future, but for now, <laughs> I'm a baller on a budget, all right? When these two Glocks get together, they make a special baby. We call that the baby Glock. The Glock 42 is the smallest Glock that there ever was. And maybe, no, nah, I don't think maybe not ever will be again. I think they need to go smaller. The story about this gun. Uh, my wife and I were at Academy Sports looking at the guns. She looked down and she saw a Ruger LCP. And she was like, oh, what is that? Like, Naturally, my wife is drawn to small things. So she saw the Ruger LCP. She was like, whoa, like, I gotta have it. We take a look at it, and uh, the iron sights are horrible. Completely blacked out. I told her that it'd be better off if she had just given her money to David Hogg than it would be to buy a Ruger. So we decided to go with a Glock. And after some convincing, I told her, I think you need a Glock. You need that Glock perfection. So she ended up looking up what the smallest Glock was, and it turned out to be the Glock 42, the baby Glock. If Hasbulla was a Glock, he would be uh, smaller than the 26, smaller than the 43, chambered in 380. It's a single stack, six round magazine, so six plus one. Now, 380, okay, is a caliber that not a lot of zoomers really like. You have the boomer crowd. They're into the 45 ACP, right? Two world wars that they couldn't win Korea nor Vietnam. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. More Vietnam videos in the future. And you got Zoomers who love your 9mm, right? They'll tell you with modern ballistics, 9mm will blow up everything. Now, am I a ballistics expert? No, I have no idea. But do I use 9mm? Do I trust it? Yeah, because I'm a Zoomer. So, 380, naturally, when I heard, I heard 380, I was like, well, that can't be that good, right? 380 is kind of known as 9mm short. It's the same diameter bullet, but it is a smaller bullet, and the casing is a little shorter as well. So, the 9mm is just a little bit bigger than the 380, and as a result, the 380 is much softer shooting. It's actually pretty enjoyable to shoot. As far as a defensive round... Uh, should you be using 380? I don't think it's ideal. I don't think it's the best round that there is. It's better than nothing, 
but that doesn't mean that uh, that should be your first choice. Do I think that everybody should go out and buy a Glock 42? Everyone on Instagram should. Throw away the Glock 19 to get a Glock 42 instead? I don't think so, because I think there's other guns that are more capable to do what most people want to do. My wife had one mission in mind, and it was to have the cutest Glock that there was. And I think she succeeded. Uh, she looked at the 43, but the 43 just did not have that cute aspect that she was looking for. Why wouldn't you want that Glock perfection? So speaking a little bit on that Glock perfection, uh, I saw some Redditors. People were saying that this was the one Glock that they wouldn't trust. Uh, I talked to a local gun shop and he was like, the Glock 42 is the only Glock I don't recommend. And basically the reason that that might be is because some of the earlier models had some issues not feeding correctly or uh, stove piping, things like that, which you will run into those issues if you limp wrist this gun. Ride it low, like it's GTA, then you're probably going to cause a malfunction and the gun's not going to feed. It's actually pretty easy to do that with this gun. I mean, this is true for most handguns, but this one in particular, if you give this a sloppy grip, you're not going to be able to feed the next round. So let's go ahead and take a shot here. As you can see, that, that other round's in there. Didn't even feed the next round, so. Uh, you have to ride the gun high, which is a phrase that I think is kind of overused because you're supposed to ride the gun high. A lot of people say that they're like, oh, I ride the gun high. They act like they're doing something, but you're supposed to run the gun high. So whenever people say that, I just imagine that they mean like, they're like this, like they're running the gun super high because it's just, it's just ridiculous. I think it's funny. You're supposed to have a high grip, as high as you can get it. And, you know, obviously support hand, all that good stuff, fundamentals, whatever. And training does matter. Out of a holster, you draw it poorly, your, your grip is not completely set up. There's a good chance that you're going to cause this thing to malfunction. You just got to be careful with that. Glock 17. So right off the bat, this has the finger grooves on it, the slide up front, which is more boxy, and there's no front slide serrations. No ambi controls is another one. Uh, that's kind of what Glock uh, Gen 4 is all about. Gen 5, on the other hand, this is my uh, Glock 19, Gen 5. It's got those front serrations. The front is, is a little bit rounded. The trigger is what they call a marksman trigger on the Gen 5s. Ambi controls as far as the slide release goes. And there's no finger groove you can see. Magwell is a little more flared. Fit magazines in a little bit better, so that's kind of cool. When it comes to the Glock 42, it's kind of a hybrid. So it has some features from Gen 4 and some from Gen 5. Gen 4, it's got that boxy slide and no front slide serrations, but it's lacking the finger grooves that you might see on a Gen 4. It also is lacking the ambidextrous slide release that would be present on a Gen 5 gun. Basically, it's really a Gen 4 without the finger grooves. <laughs> You'll never find a Glock 42 in a Call of Duty game, but that's okay because not every gun has to be in Call of Duty. You don't see Smith & Wesson M&P shields in Call of Duty games, but people still claim those are good guns. I'm just kidding. I think Smith & Wesson shields are pretty good. My cousin used to have one, but he sold it because he said it sucked. The next question, can you do a wield? <laughs> well, so let's go ahead and do the old uh, the ghosting of the trigger, if you will. Uh, you're going to get between that five to seven pound kind of trigger. Uh, there's a pretty defined wall for the 42 and a crisp break. I actually really like the break on this gun. We'll do it again. We'll get the ASMR trigger. Very crisp break, actually. Our next best trigger will probably be out of this Gen 4 uh, Glock 17. Uh, once again, you got that mush, mush, and then there is a defined wall, and then there's a good crisp click. I don't know if this is how the marksman trigger is supposed to be, but to me, uh, I've heard that there's different kinds of triggers in Glocks. You'll get a good one, or you might get a bad one. I may have gotten a bad one. I'm not sure. Uh, this one feels really mushy. And the wall doesn't seem as defined. Like it keeps going, 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 and then it breaks eventually. Uh, on these other two blocks, there's a very defined I'm at the wall click. You can still define the, the wall, you can still feel where it is, but it does creep just a little bit more than those other blocks. So that's this particular Glock's trigger. Uh, do I hate it? No, I think it's fine. Um, you can still, there's still a, a wall, enough of a wall that you can feel where that's at and you can get a shot off. Uh, but I do enjoy the Glock 42's trigger because it feels um, so crisp. 
ladies and gentlemen, I had fun making this video. I hope you had fun watching it. See, we have a more uh, professional setup now. We're moving up in the world. Once we hit 10 subscribers, it was like the game has changed. And now we got these lights, thousands of dollars in debt. Your love is appreciated. <laughs> I ask that you please like and subscribe if you can. You already know this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, if you like baby Glocks, or you like any Glocks, or even if you hate them, please like and subscribe. Get in that comment section and tell me how much of a Glock fanboy I am. I really appreciate that. <laughs> if Lucas Botkin ever found you using a Glock 42 chambered in 380, he would probably go on Instagram Live and make a really autistic rant about you. <laughs> I don't know if Lucas from T-Rex Arms makes uh, Glock 42 holsters, but if he does, he's probably never made one. That doesn't make sense. It's, no, he said it again. It makes no sense. <laughs>